Yeah. I mean, Rory, from your, from your point of view, what were what were the keys for you in, in telling this story? Well, I th you know, I, it was a story that was still unfolding as we were documenting it. Um, it was important for me not to use a narrator in the telling of this story and really have it come from the people who were on the front lines of the story, the people who were most connected to it. Um, so, you know, as you can see from this panel, there are uh, many of their stories, all of their stories are, are intersected throughout the film. We, it was challenging because there were um, ideas and concepts that were hard to translate. We used uh, a number of different ways to communicate those from from graphics, I think really helped to sort of visualize more um, some of the more difficult ideas that we were trying to communicate. We also use CGI. It was important for me um, to help audiences really get into the cockpit and understand what the challenges were for those pilots and what they were up against. You know, we now know, and I was really shocked to find out that as far back as 2016, that Boeing knew that if a pilot didn't respond between four and 10 seconds to what was happening, the result would be catastrophic. And catastrophic means the plane's going to crash and everybody's going to die. So, you know, we want to get to a point where we can communicate those ideas to the audience and help them understand what the implications of that were. We also showcase a document that was revealed between the two crashes, the Tarim report, where Boeing knew and the FAA knew that there was a likelihood of 15 crashes on this airplane. And Boeing made the decision knowing that to put that second plane up into the air and all the other planes up in the air. And you see Samuel Stumo here. Knowing that Boeing knew the risk and what that meant, that people could die and there was a decision to make that they made to prioritize profits over human loss. Yeah, and if I could, I just very quickly would like to jump on Rory's point. Even after the second crash, when reporters asked Boeing how the work on the software fixes were going, the fixes that they need to make in order to make the aircraft safe and regulators allow it to fly, they quickly retorted that it wasn't a fix. It was a revamp or an update or a revision of the software that was on the plane. And that encapsulates and really crystallizes their attitude throughout the, throughout the crisis. Right. You know, there's never, ever in the history of av aviation, modern aviation, have we allowed uh, a plane, a passenger airliner to fly with a critical single point of failure. And that's what this plane had. It was pointed out uh, years before the accidents by a senior engineer at Boeing saying, wait a minute, are, shouldn't we use both AOA sensors? Because these are very delicate instruments which often fail with a bird crash or a bag of uh, flying up fog. Uh, you know, so but this was just totally preventable and, and inexcusable. But the problem was it would have slowed the plane down and they were in a rush to compete with Airbus and their NEO. Right. Well, Chairman DeFazio, let me let me ask you, as Rory pointed out, the FAA was aware of this between um, you know, between the two crashes. I mean, are we in part of a, a system, a government that is biased in favor of of corporate America that lets big businesses and, and um, you know, slide on things that that it shouldn't before the value jack crash in florida many years ago the faa was charged with promoting and regulating the industry as a junior member i kept saying you can't do both uh and finally i got my amendment adopted after those people died uh, but it, it crept back into the culture they called boeing a customer not a regulated entity a customer and uh yeah, you know, for the life of me, I don't know what the head of uh, safety at uh, FAA did. That Tarim should have grounded the plane, the report uh, Rory just mentioned, uh, saying that 15 of these are going to go in in the life of the fleet. We've never let a plane fly like that before. No one has ever let a plane fly like that before. 
but um, you know, when we had a seven and a half hour uh, interview with him, he he didn't know anything about it. Uh, well, what do you do as head of safety, and where did that go? So we we not only reform the way aircrafts are cert certificated and the way we're going to overlook the manufacturers, we made major reforms to Boeing. I mean, to the FAA and its processes.